okay we are now recording okay we got there eventually right uh so i'm angie uh amongst other things uh, i'm a witch a cultist a sound healer um many things and the topic of tonight's discussion is love consciousness so what is that well the one thing it definitely is is the real reason that we are here right now it's why we before we incarnated we chose to be here for this for this expansion of consciousness without question and you know some people go oh no i didn't choose this <laughs> oh yes you did <laughs> and for me personally and you know some people feel the same others don't um it's very much a, a, an empowered place to be when you know that you've chosen to be here to experience this because it doesn't happen you know that often that we're going through this expansion of consciousness so for me and i hope for you guys as well um you know it's it's very it's it's a very powerful time it might not feel like that sometimes but you know i'll get into that <clears throat> So, this might sound a little bit controversial to start off with, but I'm going to start with a quote. Uh, and you, you might know this, you might not. Most people only know the first bit. Do as thou wilt, shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will. So, most people go, Ugh! you know, it's that demonic bloke. <laughs> um, and yeah, he was branded, the Alistair Crowley, he was branded the beast by uh, the Daily Mail, funny enough. <laughs> it hasn't changed. Um, but if you actually look at what he's saying, what he is saying is love underpins everything, especially your will. So if your divine will is coming from a place with love as the foundation, then you really cannot go wrong. That's that inner guidance that people talk about. Um, but it's, it's making it practical. You know, myself and, and Ian are always saying, does it say, does it actually do what it says on the tin? And if it doesn't, it goes in the bin, I'm sorry. <laughs> it has to be workable. It has to be practical. So again, I'm going to touch on that. Um, but the other thing I'm going to, and I know, uh, I think uh, everyone on the Telegram group knows this saying, yeah, energy flows where attention goes. So, yeah, what does that mean? Well, what that means is where you put your attention is where you're putting your energy. So be careful. Be careful where you put your attention because you're literally whatever that is that you're giving attention to you're giving your energy to and your energy it's like would you chop off your fingers if someone said oh i i want your attention no you wouldn't <laughs> so why would you um hang on let me just i've got a sound thing going on here on this end bear with me a second just mute that that's better um yeah well, why would you give something your attention your energy that you do not want to grow essentially so stop it that's what i say um but again that that can get that phrase energy flows where attention goes can really get people quite animated <laughs> but it's you know it's, it's all part of the learning process because I don't think there are many souls on this planet here right now who remember the last time that they went through an awakening journey. There aren't many. There are some, but not many, I would I would suggest. So, yeah, I mean, how do you feel about, you know, just take a, a little bit of stock? How do you feel about the things that I've already put out there? Ah! Excuse me, that's the dog. Okay. 
under protest he went out so love consciousness is it's the thing that creates everything it, it is the creator you know some would call it source or god or the gods you know it, it doesn't matter what you call it but essentially it is love so as we walk this we call it a synchro mystic path it's unfolding it's like you've got one foot in the societal matrix and one foot you know, on this guided path that is love consciousness um which can be tricky yeah don't get don't get me wrong it's it's tricky sometimes um but you can choose you can absolutely choose to have love consciousness there with you because it um this is something that came about um that the the kind of solidity of this idea that it's a consciousness not just a a whim because <laughs> um, it is a, is actually very practical and there are things that you can do to align to this so i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a stab i'm gonna attempt to answer the the what is it why would you connect with it who can connect with it yeah when and how to connect with love consciousness so i'm just gonna do a little magic here i have a 432 tuning fork so love consciousness um is the what we have been told uh that that's our own personal insights i, I think other people talk about it as well but i don't know because we don't necessarily listen to a lot of, you know uh, other so-called experts on um yeah there's lots of them on youtube you know they've all got the answers but no one's got the answers anyway um so 432 we worked out is the frequency of love consciousness so i'm just going to play um this tuning fork i hope you can hear that it's very subtle So that, and, and what that frequency does, it instantly brings you back into alignment with your true nature. So it's our natural state of being, which is expansive and pure love. So even things like when people talk about, um, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Blah unconditional love it, it it doesn't it doesn't really explain it. it it never did for me anyway it's like well i mean i've got to go and love everybody that doesn't make sense or you know uh, <laughs> there are so many things about the words unconditional love that don't make sense it's like yeah, it just isn't so this idea that it's a consciousness that is a creator which we are part of that makes sense so we are love consciousness but we're part of that we're part of it that's a unity basically that everyone talks about so love consciousness is the the mothership if you like and we're the little we're little pods <laughs> one of a better analogy so when you are aligned to this frequency 432 this frequency then begins to build and then emanate from you so um a lot of the stuff that we would i mean i, I still do this I, I keep up a practice of um switching on that light in the dna and that that's part of this journey as well because what you're doing essentially is you are making your light body whole if that makes sense rather than being uh, fractured so again, that, that's to do with where you put your energy, where you put your attention and your energy. You leave bits of that behind. So by 
essentially by for, for me personally that journey has been switching on the light in the dna has basically magnetized all those extra bits of energy that i've left all over the place <laughs> they they come back you magnetize them and they, they come back which is quite amazing so this frequency this 432 frequency um it ripples out and mirrors back um again again you know I, I challenge a lot of these ideas that people put out there so i i don't believe it's a law of attraction i believe it's a law of reflection so it's it's it's, it's a slight difference um but for me it, it works a lot better um that it, it's a ripple effect because it's waves everything is energy everything is waveform so it makes sense to me that if you start it's like this chin you you know it starts vibrating at a frequency that ripples out and then it eventually comes back so it shows you your internal landscape what we call the inner temple so your outer temple uh, reflects your inner temple so <clears throat> love consciousness is a way it's a way of being absolutely it's a way of being um it's it's very it's a very expansive energy it's highly intuitive so that inner guidance being allowing yourself to be guided by that if it, it, it feels a bit strange sometimes it feels like you're not in control but you are it's just we're not used to that we're not used to doing things that way we're used to thinking everything and uh, being kind of um led by the head if you like uh there is a correlation there is a uh not a correlation a emerging if you like of a mind and your heart your your heart consciousness if you like but it's not all mind it's not all you know top heavy if you like um it's also fluidic in nature so the way i see that is so you have you have two quite different ways of being in the world you can be very rigid and institutions are a big uh a big um example of something that's very rigid has rigid rules everything you know you can't challenge it because it has those rules in place it's it's um you can't you cannot reason with it at all <laughs> no reasoning with institutions and then you've got this very um fluidic way of being in the world uh which is around letting that synchro mystic path unfold so get a drink of water so this is uh, what we call the illuminated path and the signposts on that path that you then follow. And it's, it's quite amazing. I think I uh, touched on that last week about, you know, that you can actually set that, you can set that intention that that, that true path is illuminated to the point where you cannot miss it. You cannot miss those signs when they come up. Uh, it's uh, synchromistic, it's very open it is peaceful there's a stillness that comes when you are allowing that guidance from within um it's there's the insight there if you've ever watched the celestine prophecy that that is like is <laughs> mandatory what <world> viewing <laughs> Because that is, uh, the, the Celestine prophecy just has a way of showing you what love consciousness is, and it is amazing. I love that film. Um, it's proactive as opposed to reactive. So, uh, the, a rigid way of being is very reactive. It's not. It's not very proactive at all. Um, but it's also love consciousness because when when love consciousness 
um, spoke to Ian because he's he gets these things directly. I mean, it, it's, it doesn't even label itself love consciousness. It's willing to accept that label, but doesn't have a label. When it asks for nothing, uh, there are no rules. <laughs> and we're like, okay, so how does this work then? <laughs> if it doesn't want anything, it doesn't want to be labeled, really. And it has no rules. How is it supposed to work with this? But it's it's about frequency. That's what it's about. And it's absolutely this energy that we are all, everybody and everything on the planet is going through this incredible expansion of consciousness. Um, so yeah, love consciousness, it, it, when it comes to injustice, uh, it, it doesn't even, there's not even anything to do, so to speak, because if you are resonating in that frequency for 32 it's it's like things that try and get in just they they literally get alchemized it's like if you go into a dark room you switch on a light the darkness goes it retreats so that's why we're all having these kind of strange uh, people call them symptoms it's actually resistance to the energy that's moving through us at the moment. Uh, it's a bit like a pinball machine. Uh, that, that, that's that's a talk for another day, though. Um, but essentially, what 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 uh, these things that people call symptoms are is as we are getting these incredible uh, energies downloads some people call them upgrades whatever you want to call it essentially what it's doing is it's clearing us out it's clearing it's it's uh you could say it's shining our light bodies if you like it's, it's polishing them if that makes sense um which is what this expansion of consciousness is all about you know being this self-realized being that you actually are still but still in a physical body I mean, that's pretty awesome. Um, so love consciousness begins with you, everybody. Although not everyone's going to go on this journey. I, I get that they either don't know how or they, they can't. And I understand that as well because they're in resistance because if they accept that this physical body is not all we are then it's like their whole world just goes and yes that was me making that noise <laughs> um but you know the people that are on this journey absolutely they can they can be there they can hold a space for the people that aren't quite ready yet um and that's what you know that's what we try and do in our work so this aligning with love consciousness enables that self-realization. Um, so if, you, if you've ever, and I'm sure, I'm sure there are many of you listening right now who, who've had that feeling, and I don't know where it comes from, like feels like it's in the depths of your being, like you're missing something, but you can't put your finger on what it is well, this is the frequency. This is the frequency of 432. It's also why they messed with the music. <laughs> but we all know about that. So why? Why would we connect with love consciousness? Why would we do that? Because it, it seems to be, you know, more work than just, uh, you know, going about, you know, doing the same thing all the time. And never really having a, an inkling of a bigger picture um so if everything is energy everything is frequency vibration and sound then this frequency here this frequency 
is it's very powerful. Frequency is amazing. Uh, that's why we're sound healers. Because it, it has a knack of uh not not there, there are no barriers when it comes to sound it just goes through you and out the other side and when it vibrates your whole being because you know we're we're mostly water so that's going to have that amazing ampli uh, amplifying effect it's like why wouldn't you want to connect with a frequency that aligns you with your true nature it, it just it, it feels like a no-brainer really although i will say i resisted that for many years so although i'm saying it's a no-brainer i was in resistance for uh uh about 30 years <laughs> and i've had many many opportunities to align with it and like kicked it in the teeth but you know we learn and we grow and we get there in the end so when you think about how the world operates it's in a constant state of change you know nature is our biggest teacher as a witch as a pagan you know she is out there and she is always changing she is not static she is not rigid she's always changing and it can be subtle little things or it can be big things um during 2020 uh where when they they didn't cut the green for this the council they didn't cut the green for about a year and because they didn't cut the green for a year a tree grew on the green <laughs> so we have an extra tree on our green out the front it's amazing that's a massive change all because they didn't cut the green and you know i've got you know issues with you know how they manage that anyway but you know that that's pretty awesome and i love that so you know it, it, there's that question you know would you rather align with that expansive frequency like the tree um because it's a it's a um oh what tree is it it's a, a locust tree so it grew really quickly and it's massive <laughs> highly expansive i love it um or would you prefer to align with that with the frequency of fear and pain which is what we are taught that's what we are conditioned to resonate with you could say that's 440 hertz possibly uh there are other frequencies as well that um and there are some when you play them together it creates uh, almost like an infrasound which is quite disturbing um uh fear and pain is not a consciousness it's more of a thought form technically everything's a thought everything's a thought form but fear and pain is not a creative force not at all it has no creative ability whatsoever love consciousness because it's expansive is a humongous creative force so i know where i'm putting my eggs i'm putting them over there thank you very much <laughs> um so it's very much aligning with love consciousness is very much that journey of self-realization which is what we're here for so I say let's go and align with that um it's also your perception of the world which is directly related to your inner frequency so you could always ask yourself what do you want your world to look like which again can be a really hard question to look at if you don't like the way your world looks and this is your immediate world because the stuff that's out there is co-created so you, you can take some responsibility for that but everyone's doing it some knowingly some not um but your immediate reality is very much a reflection of your own perception so what would you want that to look like have a think 
which is again frequency so are are you aligning with the frequency of 432 for example or is there another frequency going on that makes you feel a little bit rubbish <laughs> um so who who can connect with love consciousness anyone anyone can choose so another one I've, i have many mantras one of them is your ability to choose is a superpower that is our superpower as creator beings our ability and our freedom to choose is a superpower be under no illusion about that so you can be the change i know that's an old one but it's a good one so 432 hertz which is love consciousness is on natural frequency because it's expansive it's create is creator being yeah it's the frequency of the universe as well although you could argue it's a vacuum out there and and yeah it is so there's no sound out there but it's still creating something out there is creating stuff <laughs> and i'm going with 432 hertz it's a frequency in the void space so it's always there it's always there for you to connect with uh and it's everything that always has been, is, and will be. So I suppose the, the, the question I would ask is, are you ready for change? So if you are ready for this change, then that's very much about listening to your inner guidance uh some people call it soul spirit higher consciousness higher self there are many words that people use but essentially it's that that being of who that that inner being yeah and allow yourself to be guided by that being um which is it's always interesting but again, I, I've got to say the Celestine prophecy is is a is an amazing resource, and every time you watch it, you will pick up something different. I guarantee it. And you could even set the intention before you watch it that you want an answer to such such and such a question, and I guarantee that answer will come up in that film. It's amazing so when 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 can when can anyone connect with love consciousness and okay so now right now right here right now in this phenomenal time that we're in yeah uh, i don't know if any of you um i where, where do i go i go to space weather live um is pure analytics yeah no agendas or anything like that so when i was uh, looking at that last week it's like wow <laughs> the sun is doing phenomenal stuff um and again the way i see that is you have the central sun which is the the powerhouse and it's basically relaying messages to all the other stars in this solar system or universe i don't know who knows where the central sun is i know it's around there somewhere um but basically it relays information which we then get uh well, we get it all the time anyway there's always energy moving through us um you could even say there's neutrinos i like neutrinos they're very cool um <clears throat> they are the particle which creates anything it's not even that creates everything it creates anything they are but this is done go and look up neutrinos they are amazing um 
So with this in increase in solar activity, we're getting more insights. So to be to allow yourself to be open to the truth of you know who and what you really are is that's the alignment. And to be able to hold that space for that energy to move through and to be able to uh, assimilate those insights is it's now <laughs> 100 percent absolutely now um it's not a destination it's not some somewhere where we have to get to it's something we already are uh so a little side note years and years ago I was in Greenwich Market and I was looking, I can't remember what I was looking for on this particular stool. Uh, and there was this little tile, which um, when I picked it up, the, the lady said to me, she said, oh, she said, you can have that. It came out a bit wrong. I'm like, oh, okay. I turned it over and on the back of it, it said, what you were looking for is inside of you. And I'm like, okay. And this was, oh, uh, yeah, I I was still doing very, destructive things back then but that <laughs> it just hit me it's like it hit me around the chops <laughs> so you know we, we get these amazing insights which we can either choose to put to one side or we can choose to go okay so where does this lead or what's next which uh, i love that what's next so it's very much um, being open to the phenomenal possibilities of being an expanded being. I hope that makes sense. So the my other mantra, I have many, <laughs> intention is 99% of universal law intention is 99 percent of universal law so if you choose to intend something different so if you choose to intend to connect with the frequency of 432 love consciousness and then make those tweaks to how you are in the world that that's that ripple that's the ripple effect and then see what comes back um because myself and, and my partner Ian we're occultists we, we like doing these experiments just to see what happens <laughs> it's it's very powerful when you make that choice and intend something that's aligned to um this particular frequency and I bet, I bet there are loads of you out there right now that are going, oh, yeah. And these synchronicities that keep happening or uh, what example have I got? OK, so we were we were looking at our wild garden. And we're saying we haven't got any of that or any of that in the garden. So maybe we need to get some. Uh, and then I went out there this morning. I'm like uh that thing that we said we haven't got in the garden we've got it in the garden <laughs> so what did that require nothing it was an intention and right now that that is very powerful so so if i explores that a lot you know when you get to the point where you are a, a fully realized creative being you have to mind what you're thinking <laughs> and like sci-fi sci is amazing at expanding your mind um so who is holding the reins who is driving the car of your particular reality um because you have a choice you have a choice you always have choice choice is your superpower um and you can do that at any time, any time. You can go, right, I'm going to choose something different right now. Right now. Because all we've got, as we're always told, 
is now. It's the only time you can make a choice is now. And we all know that. I don't need to tell you that really. Um, so how? How do we connect with love consciousness? Uh, well, one of the things, and this came from the Hathors. Uh, <laughs> the Hathors are uh, a, let me get this right, an interdimensional species of being uh, who came from the planet Venus and uh, Tom Kenyon, uh, you might have heard of him, connected with them, um, they've connected with Ian. And their, their thing is uh, you need to laugh more and you need to play more. And in fact, when, when, you know, some big scary thing institution comes towards you and goes, yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I enjoy laughing at them saying, you want to play? Let's play. <laughs> uh, so always very interesting. So yeah, the, definitely not being quite so serious and life isn't here to be very very serious it's not it really isn't we are here to experience yeah experience what it's like to be in these physical bodies you know as light beings yeah we have a very different experience when we're not incarnated in a physical body but we're here to enjoy this experience we really are um always knowing that you're always connected because you are because it is you so you can't be disconnected from you well you can be disconnected from your your inner being i should know that um but realizing that you're not really all that ever was that would that looked like it was disconnected was programs conditioning you know your own self getting in the way and rejecting you know the things that people you know, are saying to you if you like um so i suppose that the question is really it's, it's not about reconnecting necessarily with yourself but how do i disconnect from the fear and the pain and part of that is learning to recognize when though that fear and pain is distracting you and again it's it's a challenge because we are not um we're not taught that we are taught that fear and pain is where it's at and that's it so it's it's there's there's a um it's, it's like super awareness that's the only way i can kind of describe that um because my my take on on uh pain is that that's that's a density that's actually trying to leave so if we hold a space for it to leave and breath work is amazing doing that let it let it leave don't hold on to it it's trying to go let it go <laughs> let it leave and sometimes you have to get your body into a particular position i was doing that on my foot yesterday i had a very strange pain in the top of my toe and i'm like oh that's weird so i bent my toe in a strange fashion and this energy left it disappeared out of my toe it was like okay <laughs> so sometimes you have to move and i think that's why another reason why moving is so important so you know whatever that is for you walking dancing i don't know whatever it is, moving your body is so important because it helps to get rid of that energy. Um, so yeah, definitely recognizing when that, the fear and the pain is trying to distract you, trying to pull you out of your, of your stillness because it, it's stillness that piece that's why meditation is amazing 
Uh, and when I say meditation, that can take the form. It doesn't have to be sitting down and being quiet. Any form of creativity is meditation. Um, if you have ever got lost in a creative project, that's meditation because you've lost all sense of that um, exterior world. Does that make sense? So you're fully, fully connected to divine source energy, which is coming through you and coming out through your hands to be creative, yeah, or through your voice, whatever, however you are creative. And that will be particular to yourself. Um, so, yeah, how, what, what do you love? What, what is it you love doing? So, you know, absolutely take the time to do those things that you love. You know, what, what is it that, um, that, that feels um, what brings you joy? What, what is that? <laughs> what do you get really excited about when you talk about it? <laughs> you like me right now. <laughs> um, you know, really take the time to feel what that is. Yeah. Uh, slowing down. Oh, my goodness. Slowing down. Because if you are rushing, if you're in a constant alpha, uh, sorry, beta brainwave state, you can't see the signposts on that illuminated path because you just run past them. You can't see them. Um. So slowing down uh, will help that inner guidance 100%. But you've got to choose it. Um, to feel what love consciousness, how it manifests, I should say. Uh, it's nature, 100% nature. That's top of the list for me every time. But meditation, creativity, community is so important. And again, you know, why has why have communities, why have the the, the horrible institutions try to destroy community? Because it brings us a sense of love. Says it all really, doesn't it? Frequency, vibration, sound, you know, nurturing yourself, being in silence is so powerful it's amazing so i'm just going to end and then i'm going to uh, then i'm going to shut up <laughs> so one more saying with great power comes great responsibility so what do i mean so when you connect with love consciousness this holds the same charge so through that journey of connecting with love consciousness there's always personal responsibility and self-discipline so what does that mean that means that you take back the reins and if you if you do steer in the wrong direction you know own it <laughs> that's what i'd say about that and then go okay i need to go back the way I came just for a little bit and get back on my track. Does that make sense? Um, so yeah, that, <laughs> oh God, I could go on for hours about that. Um, so we have got some time. If anyone would like to ask any questions or share what their journey's been, um, would anyone like to say anything? Well, I'll jump in, Angie, and just say thank you for your show. 